I think I knew about Gould as the myth first. The strangeness of his character, and at the same time, he's so much better than everybody else. It's just beyond question. Gould is celebrated for his playing, but intrigues fans with his oddities. He wears winter clothes year-round, suffers extreme hypochondria, and hums when he plays. I would be delighted not to sing when I play. It's an awful distraction, I know that. The more people start sifting through the recordings and the idea of him as a kind of uh, rebel, I guess, rebel artist, a genius, tortured, all of these things, the more they become interested in him as a kind of mythic figure. In the years leading up to the release of the 1981 Goldberg Variations, Gould is at the height of his fame. He is releasing hit after hit, everything from Bach to Brahms to Beethoven. He also publishes writings on music and culture. But the famously reclusive Gould spends most of his time in either the recording studio or his Toronto apartment. There's a certain sadness, I think, about imagining his days. And even though the isolation was voluntary, uh, he was very much alone. Although there have been romances, Gould has never married and lives by himself. He has a few close friends, but chooses not to see them. One of his favorite things was to talk to people at length on the phone, especially at night. The shared solitude of that connection and no danger of germs or physical contact or any of the other things he was phobic about. In addition to phoning, he loved to drive. And again, a car, you know, you think of a car as a sort of mobile solitude. It's rumored he haunts Fran's 24-hour diner, appearing only in the middle of the night. This is another version of his mythos, that he's a kind of ghost of North Toronto. 